what really are the feelings between me and my best friend Austin? So I was always just like, oh my gosh, this guy is so trying hard. I remember thinking like, I don't know what I'm feeling right now, but I know that I want to score brownie points. I guess you guys are wondering, what was the moment that really changed everything? Why? Why? What's up guys? My name is Allie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is a very special day because it's the first day and really the first video of this entire kind of, I don't want to say series, but group of videos that me and Austin are sharing with you guys, really telling you guys the things that the camera didn't get to see and even a lot of our close friends don't know about. But we're super excited and ready to share them with y'all and we're going to start right away head on with one of the biggest topics. What really are the feelings between me and my best friend Austin? I know that's something that you guys have been wanting to know something that I've been dying to tell you guys for the longest time because it's obvious like you can't watch our videos and deny that there's feelings there so today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of my favorite stories the escalation of how things have been happening with me and Austin I'm ready to get kicking because I got so much inside of me that I just need to release and with that being said we have 30 minutes because I gotta show you guys somewhere and that is 45 minutes away and I'm stressed out so we gotta go get ready quick and then we're gonna go meet Austin at this place I'm if you guys have not subscribed because I found out that like 75% of you guys that watch these videos do not subscribe Y'all click whatever buttons that you got to click in order to not miss out on any of these videos We're about to post because when I tell you you're not gonna want to miss it. So do whatever you got to do. We're gonna go get ready but I'm absolutely starving. Hanger waits for nobody. Okay, we have to choose a meal to make right now. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys the options. We got crispy kicking cayenne chicken cutlets, firecracker, oh, these are one of my favorites. I'm probably gonna end up making this. Saucy pork burrito bowls. This is definitely the winner. Ever since I started using HelloFresh, I've gotten good homemade meals for cheaper than the grocery store, cheaper than taking out, and it saves me so much time because it gets delivered directly from the farm to my door. I love that with HelloFresh, I can save time and money without compromising taste and nutritional value. This food is so fresh. And if you're in need of an even quicker meal, HelloFresh offers 15 minute meals under their quick and easy recipes. And y'all think this looks good? HelloFresh offers 40 plus chef crafted recipes every single week for you to choose from. So do yourself a favor and go to HelloFresh.com and use code AliShanaki50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Oh yeah, baby. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code AliShanaki50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That is so good. We have to go. Oh, okay. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. All right, guys. We are off. We're only running a little bit late. Here we go. Y'all know this is like supposed to be like one of the hottest posing guys do. Oof, I gotta get gas. So bad. Actually, Austin's having to meet me here because I don't have a credit card. So while my gas is pumping, I'm gonna give you guys kind of a backstory on me and Austin's relationship in case you guys have not been following us because I can't assume all of you guys have been following us. So basically, me and my best friend Austin have known each other since I was around 14 years old. We both grew up in the Orlando area and both of our families were involved in acting. The first real memory though I have of actually talking to Austin was around 2016. We had this church called Jay Walkers and Noah, my brother, actually 
actually invited Austin from an audition to come to Jaywalkers. And I remember him walking in and he was wearing like a fedora. And I had never seen somebody our age wear a fedora. So it automatically caught my attention. I was like, don't I do acting with that guy? Like, what is he doing here? Long story short, Austin was the first boy that I ever made a point with, with my family to go and sit next to. And for a lot of you guys, that might not be a big deal. But when you're from a really close, big family like I am, and you're the first girl, there's so much pressure on you to like admit that you like boys, especially when your dad and your brother are so protective. And I was like scared to the core to tell anyone who I had a crush on, to tell anyone that I like boys. And I remember being like 16 years old, Austin showing up at church, and we were all sitting on the balcony and me deciding that it was my moment to break that fear off of me. So I walked down the stairs to Austin in front of my entire family on the balcony. They're all whispering, grandma's even up there. And I remember sitting next to him and Noah texting him from the other side of the church and telling him, yo bro, are you gonna sit next to me? Or are you gonna sit on my sister? And of course Austin was invited by Noah. So he got up and he left like he didn't want to feel weird. I was devastated, but it didn't end there. We started Snapchatting for a while and it ended up like not really working out. We were both so young. We had never talked to anyone. Like we were both kind of homeschooled and a little weird. So we weren't really picking up on each other's cues. Austin, there he is. There you go. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Austin got my gas for me, by the way, guys. And we're off again. So anyways, as you guys can tell, there were always feelings between me and Austin. I just really couldn't identify what they were. And, you know, we were both so similar that whenever we would talk, we would click really well or we would really butt heads. And what I mean by that is I always used to think that Austin was making up things just to relate to me. Like, you know, when you're young and guys make things up, pretend they have the same similarities and girls do that too because it helps them connect. I always thought Austin was doing that with me. So I was always just like, oh my gosh, this guy is so trying hard. So for a while, me and Austin didn't really talk. We weren't really close or friends. He was more Noah's best friend and they grew a really deep friendship with one another. And that just created even more of a weirdness between us. So we didn't really worry about it. We both kind of did our own thing. And then 2020 happened. And during 2020, our family was really, really strict about who was allowed at our house. Like my dad took it so seriously. We were not allowed to leave the house. No friends were allowed. Carol, my best friend, literally came to our house and quarantined with us. And I remember the moment that Noah asked my dad if Austin could come over and he could quarantine with us. At first, like it was super strange. Like when I would walk in a room or he would walk in a room, the tension was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. And at this time, Noah was filming videos with this other girl. And so me and Austin were like, you know what? Let's just make these videos together too. And we were trying to act like it was normal, but we couldn't even be in the same car together without it being just so awkward and weird. And I've never felt like that with anyone in my life. I did not know how to identify these feelings because I was the type of person that was just friends with everyone and so was he so I didn't understand why we couldn't get along why we couldn't just be normal and it was honestly like this a really long time for a majority of 2020 there was a lot of tension there was a lot of confusion there were girls and guys like in and out of our house there was really nothing at all between us except for just this weird thick feeling there was a lot of moments in between that really I believe God was planning in our hearts that maybe each other didn't even know about the moment that I really think was significant in the way that I began to view Austin and I began to, like John Mayer says, like see him in a new light was January, 2021. At the end of that month, me and Carol were going on our first double date ever, ever since we met. You know, it was a dream. She's my best friend for me and her to go on a double date. We met these guys and they fit that vision that we had ever since we were young. We were so excited to go out with them and our family knew about it. And you know, it was our first, it was my first date ever. And I wouldn't really consider it a date now. Looking back it was more of a hangout. And I remember before I went, Austin looking at me and him telling me not to go. It was weird because in my heart, like I understood why he was saying that, but we had never communicated anything to one another. And I still didn't know how I felt about everything. And I don't think he really did either. And so I was like, of course I'm gonna go on this date. Like, why would I not? And in the date, this guy was everything like my flesh had wanted. And it was so empty. The whole time I was really thinking about Austin and how rare he was and how much he valued the parts about me that I valued most. And so from that date, I went home. I didn't tell anybody about any of that because again, that wasn't something that I thought was gonna escalate or I could ever have the courage enough to bring up. After that date, we took a family ski trip to Colorado. And when we were in Colorado, me and Austin never really hung out, never really even talked. And I remember us playing a puzzle together because we've always both like puzzles and board games and we're both grandparents at heart. 
apart. Everyone was kind of looking at us weird. Doing the simplest thing because I'm telling you, that's how like not normal it was for us. During the last day, I was a, such a bad skier and everyone kept leaving me and I thought I was good and I almost busted my butt. But the last day, Austin decided that he was gonna stay back with me and teach me how to ski. And he was so patient with me and so kind and it really made an impact on me that day. And I could see the way that God created him so caring and so nurturing. And that was always a quality in the man that I wanted to be in a relationship with was somebody that I knew would take care of me and that was so patient with me because Lord knows I need patience. Those feelings that I felt on that date with that other guy started coming up and from that moment, things just began to slowly escalate. And before we knew it, slowly feelings just started evolving. Our family didn't really know about it, but they started picking up on the signs and like asking us questions. And you know, everyone makes fun of everyone in our group. So we were struggling like with like, oh, like this kind of makes us feel stupid, but also like, what is going on? Like this is weird, but it's also nice and like what is happening and so when we were in LA in 2021 me and Austin held hands and my parents saw us holding hands for the first time and it was a really big moment this is a TikTok we made while we were there Stay with his friends, I swear. some of you guys might remember that TikTok but that was a really significant trip for me and him and so with that being said we are here at Austin's parents house Austin just got here too what are you doing here no. I believe you've come for the same thing I have Jess it is so musty get that camera out of my face boy so in the car i was telling them all about like kind of some of our significant moments in the beginning right mm -hmm. me too and this moment like the place that we're at right now was probably one of the most significant moments to me personally and i think to you right mm -hmm. it was one of the moments that i was like okay i actually think that i might want to be more than friends the funny thing about this moment was i remember thinking like i don't know what i'm feeling right now but i know that i want to score a brownie point it felt like for the first time that bad tension between us or that it wasn't even bad just you mentioned tension. the awkward tension oh i oh yeah we went <laughs> yeah. into the awkward tension because it was like you guys don't understand it was bad it was thick that was thick tension it wasn't bad i feel like this though this moment was one of the first times that that tension was really like good it it was like lifted for a second. The tension wasn't bad. It was just, su it was heavy weird. It was just heavy weird. Like I'd never felt it with anyone else. Never felt it with anybody else. So anyways, this is what happened. He pulls up into his parents' driveway. Which is this one. And I was okay with it because I was happy to be here, but I was a little confused. Cause I was like, what has he been gone with all day? Cause the day, like when I said, do you want to go do something, right? I think I ghosted you for like most of the day to come set this up. No, you did. For like the entire day. She was like, when should I be ready? I'm like, ah, like, like 6 p.m. and you're like so you don't want to do anything the whole day I'm like nope because I was literally here sweating and like making sure all of this was ready and so he, they pull up and I remember being like what the heck and then all of a sudden mr. Armstrong comes out and should I show him what he did yeah he pulls up his car right it's raining outside I was like what is going on what are they doing in this barn I've been in this barn mr. Armstrong comes out of this door <laughs> And then he grabs it and pulls it open. Very nice. And then at this moment, your expressions work. Go over there, go over there. Oh my what? God. What did you do? Oh my gosh. How did you remember I wanted to see singing in the rain? And so right here off to the side was a sign written in chalk saying now play or showing tonight, now showing, singing in the rain. It was so cool. And it was raining outside and the rain on the windows. He pulled the car in and left the back open so that we could still hear the rain in the back. Uh huh. It was like a God moment for sure. Like what are the odds it was raining? Dude, I don't even know. And we pull in here and it's a huge screen and this is all lit up. And then he's like multiple snacks, my love language, on all the different Besides, like all my favorite things that I always told him that I love, he had remembered everything. He was so intentional. It was in that moment that I was like, oh my gosh, like this is why you wait to find the guy that like is who God has, like a godly man. That was like one of my favorite nights of my life. You're welcome. You all know what's great? What? As I was actually scrolling through my camera roll and I have a small snippet. You do not. I do. Oh, we got to put it up. Let's put it up. Go for it. Look at how cool this is. He made a drive-in! Singing in the rain. It was so cool, and it was literally raining and everything. Got all the essentials. This was the best. I just want to say something, because this really impacted me, okay? Okay. 
Like, your entire life as a girl, you're taught that if a guy does something nice for you, he expects you to owe him something. And it really shows what somebody's made of and their character when they not only respect you and your boundaries, but they don't expect you to owe them anything in return. And one of the things that was so impactful to me that night about Austin was that you had no expectation of that. Like, you genuinely just said that to make me feel so valued and so loved. So all of you girls watching, just know, like, there are godly men out there that value you and will put in the work and not expect you to owe them anything. But that was really awesome. And it really showed a lot about who you were. That's all. <laughs> now I gotta say something My brothers nice were like, what? Yo, whoa! <laughs> what is this? Long-term investment, guys. Long-term investment. Yeah. Long <laughs> Long term. <laughs> so another big moment for us was when everything like first started kind of like setting in motion, like after I went on that date with those guys and I had all of those feelings inside of me. Mm -hmm. I remember everyone like being downstairs in Noah's room and we were all watching something on Sunday and Austin came in. I'd been wondering where he was because he wasn't with us at church. And when he came in, I remember wanting to see if you'd follow me. And so I walked upstairs and at that time I wanted to learn how to play Gravity by Sarah Bareilles oh on the gosh, piano. I followed you. And you followed me. Dang, I fell into the trap. He fell into the trap. I fell into the trap. And oh. ever since I was young, I've always had this fascination for the piano. And I just think it's one of the most beautiful ways to like praise God. And like, it's one of the most beautiful gifts that I really admire and I wish I had. And it automatically like just brings me so much peace. And I remember sitting down and trying to learn it and Austin coming upstairs and I was like, yes and him like kind of helping me play the piano and then I just let him take over because that's what I wanted him to do anyways. And from that, one of the most significant moments for us like in that time of figuring things out and weird feelings that were new and him being my brother's best friend, not knowing what I was feeling was he would come and he'd play the piano for me these songs that he wrote himself and he has such a gift that the Lord's given him to play piano. So what, so. She, what she didn't know was I immediately went home and told my dad, oh my gosh, dad, you will not believe this. He's like, what? I was like, one of my biggest things in the world was I wanted somebody who would appreciate what I could do and my creativity. Oh my gosh, And awesome, so when creative. she sat down and fell asleep when I was playing piano, it was like the biggest compliment to me of it made you feel like home. It made you feel calm and cozy and Side, which is how it made me feel and it made me see like it, made, it came off as like she understood and then I was like Oh my gosh, this girl is amazing. It was like the biggest compliment to my music Which made a really big impact on me and I told my dad really yeah well, because I always like really it was a desire of my heart to be with somebody that knew how to play the piano that could like play me songs mm -hmm. as I went to sleep. So will you play me a song? <laughs> okay Another one of the reasons why I love Austin is because he is a cat whisperer. They love him. So this is the prayer cabin. This is literally a place of peace and I'm so thankful for places like this and places like the nature trail in my neighborhood that I can go and I can pray at and that are quiet and that are away from all of the noise of this world because put it in the comments if you know this world can be so noisy and it's so hard to hear the voice of God and his whisper when the world is screaming at you from all different directions and trying to distract you from what he's saying and it's really important that we all have somewhere in our life that we can come to like this and find your place near you, find your safe place, find your place with God and guard it with everything inside of you. This is definitely one of my favorite spots and somewhere that I'm gonna be a lot coming up with the Jay Walker's conference coming up. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm actually speaking at the conference and I could not be more excited. It's definitely out of my comfort zone, something that I'm really having to trust the Lord to be my strength in because I've never done anything like this before, prepared a message or anything. So it's definitely out of my comfort zone, but I know that when you stop relying on your own strength and that when you, you're put into situations where God's called you, that 
required to rely on his strength, that's when true growth happens. That's when you see God perform miracles in your life and when your faith grows and grows and grows. So I'm excited for my faith to grow. And if you guys want to come to the conference, I'll make sure to put a link below because it is going to be a time I truly believe that my faith is not just going to be grown, but that God is going to speak directly to so many of y'all and that your faith is going to be grown. And I also am excited because our podcast just started this last Wednesday. Me and Austin did a podcast on how to find your calling and how to find your purpose. So many times on these vlogs, we talk about, you know, you're created on purpose. God is a calling over your life. You're chosen by him. But what do you do when you don't know what that purpose is or you want to be used by God? But what is God calling me to do? This podcast is something that I wish I had a resource when I was you and asking those questions. So I would encourage you guys, if that's something that you're wondering or maybe you don't even believe what we believe, that's fine. Just something you're like, okay, I'm curious what she said. Go listen to it. Just to kind of go back to me and Austin's story. I just wanted to encourage you if you're watching this, that the Lord really does have you and he has someone for you. And it might not come packaged in the exact way that you thought it was going to become packaged. And I learned that. I saw it was presented to me, everything that I thought that I wanted, the way it looked, the way it sounded. And it wasn't, it was empty. And God had something so much greater, greater than I could have ever asked for, thought, or imagined. And I'm so excited to continue to release and unveil the pieces of me and Austin's story little by little to you guys because there is so much. But I hope that today was a great start, that you guys enjoyed today's video, that I know I, even if you didn't, I feel at such peace releasing this and letting you guys into this part of our story that is so special and we hold so dear to our hearts. That moment over there in that little barn was one of the most special moments of my life. And I believe that God has someone for you that is gonna value you like that, regardless of what you can give them or not. Because that is the love of God. Jesus did not need your yes when he died to save you. He did it recklessly. He did it regardless because that's how much he loves you. Love isn't about what you can give the other person. It's unconditional, it's selfless. And what Austin displayed for me over there at that barn was selfless love. And it impacted me to this day. And I pray that it impacts you and encourages you to not only be a giver of that selfless love, but also be somebody that's looking for a man of God or a woman of God that is providing you that selfless love and that reflects the love of Christ. Anyways, next week on the vlog, we are going to be talking about how Austin asked me on our first date ever. And I'm not talking about our Valentine's Day date with Carol and Malik. I'm talking about me and Austin's first date ever, a real date. Nobody knew about it. We even tried to hide it from my family. But I'm not going to get into that because I'm saving it for next week. We have so much to share with you guys and only so many vlogs coming out every week. So make sure you guys do whatever you got to do to stay connected to this story because this is just the beginning of the amazing roller coaster that God is continuing to unfold before our eyes. And we are so excited that it is his time for us to release it. So whatever you gotta do, you don't wanna miss out on what God's doing. And there are 75% of you guys that are not subscribed to this channel that watch my videos, which means y'all are probably gonna miss out. So you do you, y'all that are subscribed, I cannot wait for you guys to see the next one and to share everything. Cause oh my gosh, it's like coming out of me at every opportunity this moment. All right guys, you're amazing. God's got amazing plans for your life. and I'll see you guys the next vlog that was it you'll see bye